Here I've got two nice quick problems from a Mexican math contest. So one is from 2008 and the other is from 1986. So let's look at the one from 2008 first. So we'll consider a natural number n and its list of divisors in order. So d1 is 1. Well, obviously 1 divides everything. And then d2 is the next smallest divisor all the way up to dm, which is equal to n. Notice n is always a divisor of itself. Now we want to find n such that n is equal to d2 squared plus d3 squared. So that's the first divisor which is not equal to 1 squared plus the second divisor that is not equal to 1 squared. Okay, so let's first notice that n cannot be prime because if n were prime, well then d3 would not exist. Our list would just be 1 and p. Okay. So now let's look at a couple of examples before we look at a solution. So let's look at the example when n is equal to 10. So notice that makes our list 1, 2, 5, and 10. And notice with this setup, our d2 is 1 and our d3 is 5. So notice we'll have 2 squared plus 5 cubed. Well, that's most definitely not equal to 10. It's way bigger than 10. But I don't really want to worry about how it's much larger than 10. I want to notice that it's the wrong parity. This side is even, whereas this side is odd. We can see that this side is odd because it's an even number plus an odd number. So that's really a better indicator that they're not equal than their size for the purposes of writing down a general proof. Okay, so let's look at maybe another interesting case. Let's say we have n equals 45. So let's make a list of divisors there. So we've got 1, 3, 5, 9, 15, and finally 45. So that's going to make d2 equal to 3 and d3 equal to 5. Now let's play the same game. We have 3 squared plus 5 cubed. Well, again, that's most definitely not equal to 45. It's much larger than 45, but I don't really want to pay attention to the fact that it's much larger. I want to pay attention to the fact that in this case, this guy is even and this guy is odd. And that's a problem. This thing's even because it's an odd plus an odd. So what does that tell me? Well, that first tells me that n cannot be odd. And why can n not be odd? Because then d2 and d3 would be odd, and so they sum to an even number. So in other words, we immediately know that n must be an even number because of that verbal discussion that we just had. If it was odd, all of its divisors would be odd, but if it's all of its divisors were odd, then this kind of combination would be even. Okay, so we know that n is even. But then furthermore, we need the following fact. We need d2 and d3 to be even. Well, obviously, if n is even, then d2 is equal to 2, so it's already even. 2 is going to be the smallest non-1 number that divides any even number. But then we need d3 to be even because otherwise this sum over here would be odd. So let's think about the possibilities for d3. Well, notice it can't be anything except for 4 because if it's anything except for 4, then there would most definitely be some sort of divisor between d2 and d3, and so it wouldn't be d3 in the first place. So that means we have the following setup. d2 is 2, d3 is 4. That means we can take d2 squared plus d3 cubed is 2 squared plus 4 cubed, but that's going to be 68. So that means our only n that makes this work is 68. Okay, so now let's jump into this second problem. So here, our goal is to show that if 11a plus 2b is a multiple of 19, where a and b are natural numbers, 
So here our goal is to show 11a plus 2b is a multiple of 19 if and only if 18a plus 5b is a multiple of 19, where a and b are natural numbers, but I didn't write that here. So our plan is to take some sort of combination of these two guys to make it equal to an obvious multiple of 19. And there are two strategies here. We could try to eliminate the B variable or eliminate the A variable. Since the B variable is connected to two smaller numbers, I'll eliminate that. So let's maybe take this guy right here and multiply it by five. So we have five times 11A plus two B. Then we'll multiply this one by negative two. Minus two times 18A plus five B. So let's see what we get out of that. So we'll have 55a minus 36a from this term and this term. And then we'll have 10b minus 10b, so that cancels. But what's 55 minus 36? It is 19. So we have this combination of these two is equal to 19. So now let's maybe give these two names so that we can easily write the proof down. So let's maybe call this thing M and this thing N. So let's start by supposing that 19 divides M. Okay, but that means we can write M as 19 times X and then start rewriting this equation. So let's maybe do that. We can reorder this equation so that we have 2 times n is equal to 19a minus 5 times 19 times mx. And then factor a 19 out of this. So that gives us 19 and then a minus 5mx. Okay, great. But notice that this equation right here tells us that 19 divides 2 times n. But then the GCD of 19 and 2 is equal to 1. So that leaves us with 19 divides n. But that's exactly what we wanted to show, that if 19 divides this object, then 19 divides that object. But next, you want to do the reverse direction. But the reverse direction is almost exactly the same. So I'll leave that as a little homework exercise. And that's a good place to stop.